Now, we agree that for an argument to be rationally acceptable, and for it to make the conclusion rationally acceptable, logical connectedness, a good, a strong, logical, a high degree of logical connectedness between the premises and the conclusion is necessary. It's required. But it's not sufficient. It's not enough because you need something else. And the following example is going to give you an example of something where we have logical connectedness, but the argument doesn't have rational acceptability. It doesn't make the argument rationally acceptable. Here's the argument. Anyone who breaks a mirror will have seven years bad luck. Today I broke a mirror. Therefore, I will have seven years bad luck. Now, there's really a high degree of connectedness, logical connectedness, between those premises and those conclusions, really high degree. But the problem with it is, and the reason that that's not, the argument is not rationally acceptable, is that the evidence doesn't support, that we have, doesn't support one of the premises. And no, it's not the evidence of whether I broke about whether I broke a mirror or not today, but the evidence that the generalization that anyone who breaks a mirror will have seven years bad luck, the evidence doesn't support that premise at all. So we see that in order to be rationally acceptable, an argument needs more than that. That is, it needs evidential support, support of the evidence. The president, the premises have to be supported by the evidence.